Hey guys, welcome back. It's Get You Moving Monday, and we got a great topic to cover today, so you guys better get ready to get moving. Get you, get you, get you, get you moving Monday. I'm Ryan Coleman of the Broward and the Miami Dade Real Estate Investors Associations, also known as the Bria MC, coming to you from the Bria and MD Ria headquarters. So, how's everybody doing? Welcome back to the show. I hope everybody's ready to get moving today, because like I said, we've got a great topic to cover. One of the most popular topics is people are always asking, do you guys buy on the auction or MLS property? So the topic of today is to buy or not to buy at the auction and MLS. Well, obviously one of the things that we think about in regards to finding deals is the competition that's out there. So the way that I wanna sort of describe how I see the market in regards to properties that are available for us to purchase and buyers is that if you took two pie charts, okay, just imagine this, okay? You could even close your eyes if you'd like. So you take the first pie chart and that pie chart's gonna represent the possible properties that are uh, out there for us to wholesale flip or to rehab. And if you took the two smallest slivers on that pie chart, it would be auction properties and MLS properties because in comparison to the rest of the types of properties out there, that is the least amount of properties available. Now, mirroring image is another pie chart, but this one represents the buyers of the world. And the two largest slivers on that pie chart represent buyers who purchase MLS properties and auction properties. Well, spoiler alert, when the two biggest slivers are buying the two smallest slivers, that creates the most amount of competition. So that's the main reason why we stay away from auction and MLS properties is because there's just way too much competition. And also, if you're not aware, the majority of properties on the auction site, if you go to the calendar of what's supposed to sell um, tomorrow, because I think Mondays they don't do uh, sales in Broward County, but you look at any day of what is supposed to sell that day, go back the next day and see what didn't sell and you'll see about 75 to 85% of the properties never sold at the auction because the price was too high. So that's another reason why we stay away from auction and MLS properties. Now, just to describe a little bit more about uh, the sense of competition that we have here, let's talk about MLS properties. Now, I pulled some stats off uh, this morning off of Reifax. Reifax, if you're not familiar with Reifax, Reifax is the program that we use to source all of our property leads because it generates um, public uh, information from uh, property appraiser, from the clerk of courts, from a lot of different areas and the MLS as well. So I can utilize this program to sort of give me an idea of how much inventory is out there, how many probate properties in any one county or the tri-county area, um, and also how many pre-foreclosures and foreclosures. So some of the information that I pulled off of, of Reifax and off the MLS this morning is that right now there are in the tri-county area a little over 10,000 pre-foreclosures. Okay, pre-foreclosures are properties that are facing a foreclosure, uh, but we still have the option as an investor to purchase those before they hit the auction or before they hit the MLS. So there's 10,000 pre-foreclosures that are still available for anybody to go out, knock on their door and get that deal. Um, foreclosures, properties that have been foreclosed on, there's only about 5,000. So there's half the amount of those pre-foreclosed properties that are actually right now uh, foreclosures in the Tri-County area. Now, in just Broward and Dade County, okay, um, I looked up on the MLS and I found that there was less than 1,100 listings for foreclosure properties, um, single family homes. So if you think about the numbers, I've got 15,000 pre-foreclosures and foreclosures and I've got 1,100 listed on the MLS. So again, you can see there's a lot more off-market properties of those pre-foreclosures for someone to find than the foreclosures that are listed on the MLS. That's again, the reason why there's so much competition and why we stay away from MLS properties as well. Now, there's something else that I want you to also consider. When we talk about going to off-market properties, 
Pre-foreclosures, families that are facing a foreclosure, whether they have equity or no equity, is a great resource for us to find motivated sellers. Because remember, in the end, we're all looking for motivated sellers, period. Which, again, would lead me back to the argument as to why to stay away from the auction and MLS properties. Because the banks that are representing those REOs or those foreclosed properties or auction properties, they are not as motivated. In the cases that they are motivated, well, then the price would be at the point that somebody could purchase and someone has purchased it. Um, but most of them are not motivated. So that's why we see that. So one of the things that you want to think about, and an article that I read um, that was online from CNN uh, about a week ago, is that subprime loans are making their way back. Now, for those of you that are not... Um, uh, that don't know what subprime loans are. Subprime loans, very simply, when a, a loan is subprime, it's basically for people who have questionable credit scores. The way that they usually say it is that their credit is less than perfect, okay, is what they say. But really what you're talking about is the risk factor, okay? When the market crashed, and the market obviously crashed because of subprime loans, Escalated payments or adjustable rates of mortgages, we also call them ARMS, is where you're paying $1,200 a month and then all of a sudden you're paying $2,600 a month and that's why the majority of people went into foreclosure in 2007. Well, guess what, guys? We don't learn from our mistakes and we're starting to do it again. Subprime loans are coming back for all of those borrowers that have less than perfect credit from the crash of the market. So when the market crashed, subprime loans were gone. Everybody said, I'm not taking any more risk. We've already lost you know, our shirts in, 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 the, in this crash. I don't wanna lose anything else. I don't wanna lose any more money. I don't wanna lose any more uh, um, of our properties, okay? So across the board, all banks were getting rid of subprime loans. Well, now to stimulate the economy and get things coming back, because guys, we live in a capitalist society. Society is not going to work in this country if people are not borrowing to buy houses and cars and have their credit cards and blah, 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 blah. So subprime loans that are coming back because we need them and because everybody's demanding them and you've got tons of people out there that have questionable or less than perfect credit scores they need to be able to get loans for houses well what's going to happen people are going to get subprime loans they're going to get adjustable rates of mortgage they're going to lose their home to foreclosure now i'm not saying we're going to have another catastrophic um, crash like 2007 but as tony robbins and a few other uh, um, people are saying that are in the financial world, winter is coming. So what that does is that relates to us in saying there's going to be even more of this pre-foreclosure inventory. Like I said, we have 10,000 in the Tri-County area now. Subprime loans come in for the next 10 years. We're going to see uh, um, a revolving door of people that come in, get loans, and then they come out uh, because they're losing their property to foreclosure because they cannot afford uh, the payments. You know, we're still in a very shaky economy. And so when people getting subprime loans, I hate to say it, and I, I, I want to put this disclaimer out there, I'm not hoping that this happens. I'm not sitting here praying that our economy starts to collapse and our real estate market crashes again. Um, but I don't control whether that happens or not. I'm just going to be one of the investors here that's ready and prepared for it. Okay, so to conclude all this information, I gave you the reasons why we don't go off uh, after auction properties and MLS properties. Too much competition, prices are too high in both arenas. Then I gave you some numbers as to regards to the, the inventory and there's a ton of pre-foreclosures, off-market properties, motivated sellers that are just waiting for you to go and knock on their door to get that property in contract, okay? Now I'm telling you that there's going to be a flood of new subprime loans that will be coming at some point in time. I don't know how much or exactly when, but I do know, mark my words, this is coming uh, because it's just something that we we're, we have to do. We don't really have a choice in order to, it's like a catch-22. We have to stimulate the economy and get loans going on, but we also have people that have less than perfect credit scores that need to be able to apply for those loans. So it's just gonna cause a little bit more risky mortgages that are gonna be you know, coming about and, uh, and that's gonna change things. So we are gonna see this. And by the way, one other thing that I will mention in my conclusion is that all of the loan modifications uh, that have been going through, there's, there's a very high percentage of those that are also adjustable rates of mortgage. 
So all of these homeowners have been qualifying for loan modifications. We're already starting to see, we're getting the calls from our direct marketing. My students are getting calls, some of their homeowners and their farm areas that told them two years ago, they got a loan modification. Well, guess what? They're starting to fall behind on their payments again. So we're starting to see more inventory. So in, in regards to the question, should we make offers on MLS or auction properties or not? I say no. Um, you can certainly look for deals still on the MLS and auction properties. We found one MLS property last year. Um, we found one this year, and I think we bought one or we bought two auction properties last year. But out of all the properties that we do, uh, we don't do a whole lot of MLS and auction properties. So uh, my opinion is go after the off-market deals where there's the least amount of competition. And now you know what time it is, uh, announcements. All right guys, well it's the end of the month and you know what that means, it's the beginning of the next month, which means the MDREA and BREA meetings. The first Tuesday of the month are MDREA meetings, the first Wednesday of the month is the BREA meeting. So next week, May the 1st on Tuesday, MDREA meeting at the Miami Pullman Hotel, doors open at six o'clock, and next Wednesday, May the 2nd, is the Broward Real Estate Investor Association meeting at the Signature Grand, doors open at 5.30. Now, for both meetings, from 6.30 to 7, we are having one of our favorite corporate members, Robert Crum of Housing Hub of Charles Ruttenberg Realty. He's also our diamond sponsor two years in a row for our expo coming up this year in October. And Robert specializes in buying properties at the public auctions. Now, I know that I said before that in my opinion, I don't buy properties at the auction. However, auctions are starting to get even larger with the amount of inventory that they have and you can find some deals. Like I said, we bought two deals last year off the auction. So if you really do want to learn about how to buy properties the right way off the public auction, this is the guy to talk to you about it. So uh, Robert Crum is going to be teaching from 6.30 to 7, both nights at both meetings. And then our main event, um, we are going to have uh, our, another one of our favorite corporate members from the uh, defaulted um, Investors Association. And Rich Meyer is going to be teaching about how to profit and help homeowners recover through surplus funds. Surplus funds are the additional funds left over if a property is sold at tax uh, uh, for the tax deed. So what he's going to teach to you guys and what he'll cover is how to make claims for foreclosure properties and tax deed sales on the surplus that's left over, what a lot of people don't know about. So these are some uh, really good golden nuggets. And this is what Rich has been doing for many, many years. So he's going to teach you guys how to make extra money off those tax deed and foreclosure sales by dealing with the, the, the surplus itself, not actually buying the properties. So that's going to be May the 1st, May the 2nd, next week. Don't miss either one of those meetings. All right, boys and girls. Well, unfortunately, that's all the time that we have for today's episode. I hope that I got you guys moving, and especially when you're done watching this, get you moving and get out there and get some off-market deals. And if you really want to buy at the auction, you need to come to the meeting next week and learn from the experts. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. Give us a like on our Facebook pages and Instagram you can follow as well. We're going to be continuing to release our, our rehab episodes, so you make sure that you guys stay tuned for that. Any other events or anything that we have coming up, of course, you can always see on our websites at bria.com and miamidaderia.org. So join me next week. I'll see you guys at the next Get You Moving Monday or hopefully next week at one of the two meetings. And between that time and now, remember every day is a new opportunity for your success. Thank mm -hmm. you.